Zone's own Johnny Hecht. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Good. All right. I'm just going to cut right to it. I've seen you play a bunch of times, whether it be football, basketball. You seem to be a, the anti-fan favorite for other schools. Your school, your fans love you. Other opposing, eh, they're not too, they're not too good with you. What is it? What is that relationship? How did that start? Um, I've just, I guess I've just never been a very shy kid, and I've always been pretty recognizable with my long blonde hair and just being kind of the tall, lanky kid. And um, being the youngest of four in my family, you either learn how to talk back or you just get beat up around the house. So I've always kind of had this kind of competitive nature and sorry, I'm not sorry about mentality about really whatever I, whatever I do out there on the field. And I mean, I feel like for the most part, other players on other teams don't hate me too much. And it's, it's funny because, I, I mean, I never minded it. I loved it because it, it kept the distractions away from my, my other teammates. I'd been used to it by senior year felt like I've been hearing things for eight years now so I, it really never bothered me too much but I, I honestly I kind of appreciate it and loved it because I mean it's why you go out there and play it's for the for the atmosphere for the energy yeah well I know <laughs> like people talk about the world being a stage and stuff there's no doubt on, on a basketball <laughs> court when you're out there you use the court as your stage oh oh for sure a hundred percent I love it I mean it's just the, the way I have always been and so my, my parents don't always love it. My mom doesn't always <laughs> love it, but uh, they got used to it by senior year. A little bit of give and take. I notched it back a little bit, and they just loosened up on the reins. But yeah. it's fun. I loved it. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Your your fans, they they feed they feed you a little bit. They they kind of they, they kind of egg you on a bit. They do. How great is the Madison student section? Oh, I mean, it's 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 why you play. Hey, I grew up my. my my siblings went to McLean, and I used to go to the McLean Langley rivalry games, and that gym would sell out, and all this different stuff. And I mean, but McLean and Langley were never that good. It was the difference. <laughs> so uh, when I got the opportunity to come here, it was just it was cool, because especially because Coach Kevin Roller was over at McLean as I was growing up. So I was at McLean youth camps and things like this with Coach Roller. And when he made the transfer over, it just happened to be that I also was making the transfer over. So. The fact that I kind of had my basketball side of it already a couple steps ahead where I've been running the offense for a few years and everything, it gave me the opportunity to kind of be a little bit more personal with our, with our fans and right. give them a little hype. And it was, it was always funny on, when game days were coming up, home game days, I'd shoot out a big text, group text, and say, hey, what handshake are we doing tonight? I'd always like to get the fans involved with right. running up and having your teammate take a picture of you with them or something fun like that. But... I mean, if they're going to come out and support, you, you got to give them the love back. You know, it's, it, I wish I, tr I tried to get the games free for them, but uh, if they're going to come out and pay to, pay to watch me play, you got to give them a show for sure. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you tried to get the games free for them? Oh, I mean, I did all year, everything. Ever since uh, August started, I'd always been in activities ear about, because I'd see things on Twitter about like Robinson having like $1 <laughs> games and stuff, and I'd be like, hey, activities. Let's let's hook it up for the fans, and but uh, never got that one to work. I think hopefully in the future we're gonna try and get down, especially for playoff things where region stuff like mm -hmm. that. They'd cover the extra, so only stay five dollars throughout the whole season. But no promises there by any means. But Man. it would be it would be sweet for sure. We better see Madison better to give the student section free interest to something next year. That's what I'm saying. We call it, you can have it at the Johnny Heck bobblehead night. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There you go. See, oh, yeah. that's, the, that's, <laughs> that's a money maker for you. Don't <laughs> don't tell Catholic University. <laughs> um, all right, you said something a minute ago when we were talking about your relationship with opposing fans and stuff, and it's something that actually I was telling John a little while ago um, when we were preparing for this. Do you realize how much pressure you take off of your teammates? By having that, by having that interaction with other fans, because the fans don't yell at the other guys on your team as much. No matter what's going on, they're always yelling at you, and I think it takes a lot of pressure off your teammates. Well, the I mean, the first time I ever kind of made that realization was uh, I actually never told him this, so hopefully he doesn't get embarrassed. But Johnny Korish, um, my so it was my junior year, so my second year on varsity, we were 
going and traveling to Marshall and he came from Marshall and mm -hmm. he was the big trader and everything like that and I knew coming in that he was going to get heat and I kind of watched him just I mean every time he touched the ball trader trader everything like that and that was the first game where and then when I touched the ball I got my own heat and everything like that and looked around nobody else really was ever getting anything and that's when I kind of realized I was like man like if I can just be a distraction and because when Johnny Kors is on his game and he was a player and it was it was something else it was, it was fun to watch from the bench but that was kind of when I realized I was like man people like we are all high schoolers people will get affected by posing fans with because I mean people love their game they will but at the same time the great part about high school sports for me personally is you know the people you're playing against. You know when we go play Mass Marshall and the gym packs up and somebody's screaming at me, I look right up and I say, hey, and give them their name. Yeah. So they know. I know who you are. You know who I am. Right. It's not like Alabama and LSU where you have no idea who these crazy fans are. It's right. just – so, I mean, it was fun. And, I mean, I hope, I hope it worked for my teammates. It was never my main priority, really. I never – try to give the fans too much thought, but I'm, I'm glad if, if I was able to distract them from my, my teammates, that was, that's, that's another bonus right there. And that's why I wanted to talk to him. That's exactly the reason. I, you could see it. You could see the way that you react and the way that things happen. You could see that you know what you're doing <laughs> when you're doing it. I, I like that. I, well, I tell you, I've talked to some coaches and all of them say the same thing about you. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing they said. The second thing was he's a gamer. Oh, yeah. All I'm saying, he's a gamer. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that means that you're terrible during the week or if that means you're great on game day. Uh, I mean, I guess you can say one joke I always got for these past four years is people would say, uh, all my coaches would say, the only reason Johnny Heck plays three sports is so he never has to lift in the offseason <laughs> with any sport. So, I mean, maybe it was kind of that kind of job, but – it's just when it, uh, Friday, whether it's Friday Night Lights or on the court, out on the, on the diamond, and it's just once it gets going, I, I play to win. And yeah. whether it's me out there making the plays or my teammates, however I can help them do that, I mean, it's all about the, the black and red, the Warhawks. So, I mean, I loved it. And when it got to that game atmosphere, it was definitely, I was definitely a whole different whole different beast than the joking around at practice, right. messing around with everybody because I was serious about it. I wasn't going to give up another month of my summer and all my weekends and everything like that just to go out and lose games. That's no fun. There you go. Yeah. What was it about Catholic? Ooh, uh, the first thing, honestly, is it's probably a better degree than I would have been able to receive without football helping me get in there. So, and... I mean, I'm not that ashamed to admit that. I mean, my grades could have been better in high school, but they kind of came in. They said, hey, man, it's a, it's, you're not going to the league. And I know I'm not going to the league. And they said, it's a, it's a 40 year decision, not four. Like, and on top of that, it's, it's close. The, uh, so my parents can come watch me play, hopefully, if, if that all goes well. And, and then when the offensive coordinator, Coach Drisco, sat me down and said, hey, uh, I'm trying to throw the ball 65 times a game. I said, where do I sign? <laughs> that, that, that was the end of it for me. It. I said, all right, well, let's have, let's have some fun for four years. There you go. Well, yeah. What, how many times did a coach call you if you were on a beach trip or something and just say, please come home? Just please make it home. <laughs> did coaches ever call you? Did coaches ever worry about you in the, when you weren't on the field? Um, I, I definitely got a couple of texts before <laughs> beach week this, this past week, but, uh, I, I think for the most part, they, they knew I never had bad intentions by any means. They right. just knew I, I went with the flow and liked to have a good time. But, uh, that, I mean, that's the thing about the coaching staffs I've had is any of them. It, I mean, it's not, it's bigger than football, bigger than basketball, bigger than baseball. If, if something goes wrong, you can call them. They have, that I mean, they have my back at any point in time. And that's still now to this day, even, even after I've done playing for them. And it's just whether, whether I got myself in a sticky situation or not, I mean, that was always helpful to have in the back of your mind. And that's also the kind of thing that it would make me feel guilty if I right. went out and it's like slapping them in the face. If I, if I go out and just disrespect them like that. So Hopefully they didn't worry too much, but 
I feel like they definitely thought about it after big wins or something like that, but I made it, so we're here. Did anybody have more fun than you during their four years? Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> what, what is the moment, what is the thing you're going to miss most about Madison? Is there one moment that sticks out, or is it just a thing? A thing oh, you know? I mean, it's just the, I mean, the family atmosphere for sure. I mean, it, but that's the thing about Vienna in general. I mean, grew up playing VI sports, VI football, everything like that. I mean, you bond. It's 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 a small town feeling and everything like that. And especially with the uh, the passing of Coach Schultz over the summer, last summer, it was. That's kind of when I really realized how closely knit this community was because. I was actually, I had a pretty devastating, I found out the devastating news at uh, Sleepaway Basketball Camp. I was mm -hmm. just getting back on the bus to head back from Eastern Mennonite University out in, uh, by JMU. And I, when I heard the news, I mean, I kind of just sat down and started crying for two straight hours. But I had only one other football player on the bus with me, Tommy Williams, and he was right there with me. But it wasn't just the football players it was the basketball players everyone was coming up to me saying hey man whatever it takes like whatever you need from me we're all here and everything like that and the coaches I mean coach Roller was even hesitant to let me drive home because he was he was worried about me and it's just I mean that's the kind of thing because it's bigger than sports sometimes and yeah. coach Schultz it, that's the thing is he we, me and him butted heads a couple times just because the personalities and everything like that but I never questioned where that he that he loved me and that he wanted the most for me and that he was just pushing me to be better and, and it's just that that's the thing about Madison is it's insane I mean our baseball hats uh, this year our red ones we have we had an LS62 patch on the back of it and the the signs fans would bring out that the first moment of silence we had in that Oakton game home opener I mean phew, I was sobbing like a baby good yeah. good thing defense started that game for us for sure those guys. <laughs> Those guys are some tough boys, but that 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 was the number one best thing about Madison for me is for sure the the family atmosphere, the the relationships I got to form, and the great memories we got to make winning all these games these past four years. Boom! I got nothing else to say after that. That was perfect. I'm glad. Madison Warhawks own Johnny Hess. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it.